Hey guys, this is LG Shaft. With me is Bug Rancher. And we are presenting to you guys the MSI Cup Pro number 11. This is hosted by Team Millennium for some of the best players in Europe right now. It is invite only, so if you haven't been making a splash in the scene, you're not actually in this tournament. So everyone we're looking at here is a really great player bringing you really great games these are all best of threes so without much further ado we are gonna launch right on into this PVZ my friend Bug Rancher is gonna introduce these players because he is such an awesome human being but let's get this game unpaused before we do that in three two one go I'm on the bottom right hand side of the map all right, this is Bug Rancher here. In the bottom right corner, I have Fnatic, MSI Fnatic, Todd for you, the Protoss player. Uh, he's uh, been playing in Korea very recently, so uh, he's been competing with the best on the Korea server, which uh, many people say is very good practice. In the top left corner, we have a Moose player, same team as Moose Moro. We have a Zerg who's proven himself in many clan wars in uh, the IPL against Korean players. Moose Biggs. Awesome. Now he is going for that spawning pool first build uh, that we see from Stefano. It's more than likely going to transition right on into this fast three base style, but. That might be calling the cards a little bit too early. I'm just talking about the current metagame. Biggs is not really a player I'm familiar with. Is he a super standard player, or does he like to mix things up a little bit? Well, from what I've seen in him, and I've seen some uh, IPL clan wars, uh, moves versus Slayers, moves versus FXO, that sort of thing, he plays a pretty solid standard style. He... Uh, relies on his good mechanics and uh, that's what a lot of Zerg players do to get there. We're looking at the EPM tab right now, which is actually uh, real APM, uh, or Blizzard APM, and uh, Moose Biggs is uh, up at 262, so that means he's playing up at 300 plus APM, so he's got his mechanics down. Uh, he's going for the super standard, three hatch opening. You can tell by the Hatch, he placed his third, which is a pretty standard response when you get that pylon block. And he scouted a Forge FE for his opponent, so we're probably going to see a pretty standard game from here. Absolutely, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And I'm excited. Uh, I think PVZ is probably my favorite matchup. And, ooh, this probe is going to be chased down. It's going to get home safely uh, to the safety of this cannon. These lings will be pushed right on that. But that probe is going to be forced off the map, and probes on the map against this 3 base style is a really, really big deal, especially on a map as big as this one. Right. For you, uh, for you newer Zerg players, uh, one of the biggest things in this early game phase, especially against a Forge FE, is using these initial wings, a minimal amount of wings, to scout for proxy pylons. And you can see Gibbs right on top of that, setting up all these attack rallies around the map at likely proxy points. And uh, you can see he's pretty much chased the Protoss player off the map, and he has achieved map control. Map control on a map this big is hard to uh, establish fully, but what he's doing is using... Well, he's actually not using patrol anymore. Uh, oh, here we go. He's activating it again. But using uh, these attack rallies... He is going to be able to kill off any probe that is going to try to lay down pylons, and he's covering the most likely positions, uh, so his opponent has to get creative if he wants to do something. This zealot is going to try to clear some of these zerglings off the map, and generally speaking, that's going to allow the probe to follow up and uh, lay down a pylon wherever he likes. Right, this initial zealot is pretty key, uh, PVZ. Uh, the zerg player wants to make the fewest amount of units and the most amount of drones and so it takes four zerglings to kill one zealot so a lot of times cross players will use this initial zealot to take the watchtower 
and allow a probe to skirt by to place a proxy pylon if they want to do any warp gate pressure. Uh, the biggest thing in this game state that happened right now is this initial pylon block, the natural, forced the Zerg to make his third base at the third uh, normal third. His second base, yeah, at the third. And so that forces his uh, drone rallies to lose mining time and can actually make a big difference. These little things add up, especially in pro games like this. 10 HP Overlord in the bottom right-hand corner just managing to get away from that stalker. Oh, wow. Skirting by the margins. And, and a Ling got in to scout the Robo Bay. That's a big deal. Now an Overlord is in the main to follow up that uh, Ling scout. So he has full vision of both the main and the natural. Anything that might have been hidden has been revealed. So he knows exactly what he's got to get to defend what's coming up. What kind of build order do you think is coming? To me, it looks like some immortal century play. Well... Judging by the timing of these warp gates, I would expect Todd to try to take a very fast third, which is relatively easy to defend on this map. If he wanted to do an early warp gate pressure, he probably would have gotten his gateways up at six, seven minutes. Now, what Protoss players are doing nowadays are faking fast third type builds in order to fake an immortal sentry all in. So... Really, Todd has put himself in a position where he can either take a third, try to defend it, macro up, or he can go for an Immortal Sentry all-in and really put some pressure on his opponent, depending on what he sees the Zerg player do. Now, it's just up to uh, Gibbs to, uh, or Biggs, <laughs> excuse me. You're struggling with his name. <laughs> I know, I keep seeing the, uh, the Iggs. It's all uh, in different capitals, but it's up for the Zerg player at this point to try to defend any all-in that comes at this point with uh, Roach Ling and uh, try to take his fourth base and deny the Protoss' thirds. Really, P ZBP depends on the Protoss getting these fifth and sixth geysers. That uh, a three-base Protoss is just so much stronger. Than a, than a two base per off. Roach is getting caught in the middle of the map. Force fields are being forced to use, but with this many centuries, that's not as big a deal as it could have been, and those roaches were quite expensive. Well, it looks like uh, Top is going to do some immortal century pressure, which is actually very, very good on this map. And what's you awesome. can get in some very tight areas where force fields are very strong. I really like where he's positioned this pylon. His, the roaches will have to be completely out of position to target that down. Uh, he's obviously not even aware of it, and Todd can just uh, warp right on in into the low ground uh, to reinforce the main army. What Biggs really needs to do right now is target those sentries down with his roaches, but at the moment he just can't get the concave he needs or a hug against the stalkers and he's poking in and out trying to bait a couple of force fields all of those sentries are pretty low on energy at the moment but as soon as one of them gets energy all of them will and that's going to be a lot of force fields well it looks like uh biggs is doing the kind of standard uh flanking maneuvers against this all in which is so key to defending it and he's pulling all of his drones at this point which actually is not a bad idea because this is an all-in. Uh, the Protoss will be stuck in two base, which it looks like he holds. This is awesome. Now Todd does have a lot more harvesters than his opponent, but he's also a base behind, and with a Zerg opponent who can make drones as quickly as he likes, uh, that's not really a situation you want to be in. Especially because the Zerg player has four hatcheries with queens of them injecting so he'll be able to replace that drone count no problem but the key thing is he defended his immortal sentry timing and now he's and actually going to apply some alive. pressure to the natural uh he's going to check see if the third is there i don't think he really wants to attack up that ramp just yet he saw a couple of sentries there uh but if he were to attack up there right now this gateway has been destroyed and he would be able to kill off his opponent yeah, and he's got, I mean, Todd has got some sentries. He can hold off for a while, and it looks like he knows his kind of 
semi-all-in timing has failed. And so he's going into Colossi and trying to take a third base, which is probably the correct decision. Uh, Todd, or uh, Biggs is not going to defend, uh, keep going with this pressure. He's going to he's gonna drone up a little bit more. But uh, it looks like uh, Biggs is seeing if he can go make some big trades at this point, which is so key before Protoss gets its third base. The more you trade, even if it's not the most cost efficiently, you can always supply up faster than your opponent, and Biggs has every intention of taking advantage of that right now. The most important, uh, the most expensive part of a roach is actually the overlord, uh -huh. and that, uh, Dylan, you're not needed by the way, um, but the most expensive part of a roach is the overlord, and when you sacrifice a roach, you're only sacrificing 75 minerals and 25 gas. It's the Overlord that was really expensive because... Oh my gosh, we've supply. got a Sentry drop with a Zealot Warpin in the main. Holy I God. do not know if he's going to kill off the lair. I do not think he will. Okay, we've got a, we've got a few transfuses by Big, but oh my, oh my God, he kills off the lair. That is huge. You're that a little gets bit ahead of me, completely back in this game. It's uh 15 15 time right now. There's the lair dying. You're a lot ahead of me. I'm sorry about that. Oh no problem. Just um in about 20 seconds, start counting down. Okay, 15 36, 37, 38. Keep counting. 44, 45, 46, okay. 47. Alrighty guys. Yeah, we're. Roachling right there, and Fester so. coming out for a Zerg player. Pretty good composition against Terran. I don't think I've seen it very often against Protoss, though. So. Yeah, it looks like, um... It looks like Biggs is just going to use this, uh, this cheap, but easy to replace Roachling mix to try to trade as best as he can with his Protoss opponent. He's denied the third. But the Protoss player has denied his killed off this main base, destroying tech, and also destroying a mining base with the cell at warp in, so uh, it's interesting to, get, to see how it plays out. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Oh, wow, these roaches are getting a good natural hug against the stalkers, and the Fester and Terran are spawning now. That's going to supply a lot of DPS, and the Protoss army is standing still. Colossi doing a lot of damage to these plump units, but it's not enough. These stalkers are getting cleaned up left, right, and so on. That's going to force the Protoss to run back. More Zerg reinforcements are running in. The pod is forced into his third as a natural choke point. Biggs is going to run right on into the natural that frees this up completely. A Colossi is stuck without anything to uh, defend it. And he might be able to get up the ledge and do a little bit of damage, but is it worth listening to Colossi? I'm not sure. Now here at the third, most of the units of Todd have been picked off. This is not looking good for our Protoss player. No, it's really not. He's got this third up, but it is not saturated at all. He's rallying all production and transferring uh, probes from his main to the third, and he's, he's taking a risk by getting out these colossi this early. He's made himself vulnerable to a lot of roach pressure, but I mean, he still has a third, but Biggs has got his fourth up and is working on his fifth. It's, uh, and his creep spread is phenomenal at this point. It is taking over the map. So it's an uphill battle for Todd at this point with supply counts with the Zerg, 50 supply ahead. I agree absolutely, man. This is uh, looking a little bit rough. This, uh... Ah, Todd has a lot of harvesters, but Biggs just has more, and with more bases uh, and more harvesters, economically, Biggs is ahead. Uh, when you're ahead on uh, economy, you're usually behind on army, but Biggs is actually maxed out where his opponent is 60 supply from it. Um, this is the worst possible position for anybody to be in, not just Protoss, but anybody. Oh yeah, it looks like uh, Biggs is gonna try to make a trade with these Roachling, Corruptor, and Fester composition. 
he, he ought to be able to trade effectively unless the force fields are absolutely perfect. And uh, wow, that's a lot of infested Terrans being thrown down. I don't know why, but you are still so far ahead of me. I'm at 2011. Oh, wow. Alrighty, so the Rook's Ling army is running right on in. Infested Terrans are being thrown down like my very psychic friend predicted. Uh, these Corruptors <laughs> are showing a lot of DPS against these Colossi. But the Protoss army is manning to stand uh, against the Zerg for the moment. Roaches have been rallied in. They're targeting down Stalkers. But uh, they're mostly being a shield for these Infested Terrans whose lives are about to be done. They're about third left on time and they are cleaned up here by the Stalker Immortal Force. But that was very cost effective for Biggs. Todd knocked right on back into the Sony at 111 supply here at the 2107 mark. You like how I worked that in there, right? <laughs> I appreciate that. No I'm at 2116. Tell me when you get there. I'm actually ahead of you. 2124. Okay, Adrenal 2132. Glands, uh, close enough. Adrenal Glands on the way, plus one flying attack finishing as well as Burrow. We are going to see a Broodlord game, and I am happy for it. This Ultralisk stuff, it was strong for a little while, but it never really had much potential beyond the initial surprise factor, and Terran have got over that. So it's time to go back to the super standard Broodlord and be ready for Vikings. Or... Uh, in this particular case, of course, there are no Vikings, so be ready for that friggin' mothership and those damn Archons. Well, it looks like uh, Todd has decided that he does just not have enough money to go into that mothership Archon transition, and Biggs is going to try to push into the uh, into the area between the third and natural again. Really good attack here by Biggs. He's cleaned up most of the herd. The investors there are just kind of watching the battle, but most of the lings and roaches have been cleared up, and these investors have run a little bit too close into that battle and are getting picked off left, right, and center. Stalker's choosing not to engage because they know uh, some more mobile reinforcements would probably be on the way. He is going to reinforce uh, here with this Colossi and start moving right on out. He knows this is his opportunity, and if this doesn't work, it's going to be game over, but... Uh, Perhaps he feels a little bit more confident than I do in him. Uh, that, or he's just tired of playing this game. Oh yeah, I mean at this point, Vix is definitely not covered with creep. Todd is fighting just an upper battle. And, uh, wow, all he's got left is some sentries to try to kill these broodlords. And it's, it's looking grim for Todd. Force fields don't really do much against broodlords. Hmm. Wow, these sentries have killed off quite a few brutes. <laughs> I'm Amazingly, impressed. I've never seen sentries kill off that many blue boys before. Uh, yeah, that was insane. I wonder if they like do extra damage to armored or something. <laughs> like three sentries here are killing off morphing brood lords, but eventually are killed <laughs> off by ladies. That was incredible. Todd obviously is amused as we are. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's just happy to kill off so many blue boards with sentries. I, I mean, <laughs> I would be I th too. I, I think he knew uh, he was in a losing position at that point. But uh, Biggs played an excellent. He basically played a clinic on standard ZVP at this point. I agree, man. Awesome stuff there. We will go ahead and award him that first point and see if he can grab the second one to Oh, Todd. Todd is definitely a protoss to be reckoned with, though. So this is not going to be an easy feat. Alrighty, guys. No, it's definitely Go ahead. Yeah. Well, guys, we will be back in two minutes. I will see you on the other side. Bye-bye.